example study in front of you. The context of our research is a four-year te integrated teacher education program where I teach. All of us know that stories are cultural narratives that communicate valuable information about any community. And stories have been recognized as one of the most potential tool to educate young children, especially in a fun and non-threatening way. So in our teacher education program, this practicum called storytelling and children's literature is offered in the second year of the course. And this program is aimed at building knowledge, uh, skill development, as well as application of these skills in the real classroom settings. Now for uh, this practicum, orientation for various tasks require face-to-face -face interaction, demonstrations uh, of uh, various skills, as well as feedback on various assessment tasks. We are also supposed to be sensitive to learners' context, their learning styles, as well as their language proficiency. In this practicum, assessment is integrated into the teaching learning process since we don't really have summative assessment at the end of the term because this is a practicum. So we have a series of uh, formative assessment tasks spread over the year. And uh, we are consider uh, we you know the guiding principles uh, for all the uh, selection, designing, and adaptation of assessment tasks are equity, access, and quality. Now we all know that this pandemic presented a challenge in front of all of us, and we had to search for alternatives to in-person teaching as well as assessment. Uh, because we also had to be careful about the validity and authenticity of the assessment tasks that we choose for our students. So what we did was we were left with one task of orienting students for storytelling. And we decided to do this task through WhatsApp sessions. So we took a uh, long um, WhatsApp sessions, uh, uh, you know, through discussions and uh, we did uh, uh, the process and technique of storytelling as a pedagogical tool through WhatsApp. A number of e-resources were shared with our students. There were short readings and there were audio video resources. And then we asked the students to record their videos in which they are performing a story in front of an imaginary audience as an assessment task criteria was shared with the students and they were supposed to record and send these videos to us for as an assessment task. Uh, after this whole experience was over, we also thought that we need to now evaluate this whole experience and reflect on the whole experience because we also need to take similar decisions in the uh, next semester. And the rationale for doing this was that uh, uh, we wanted to reflect on the role of technology mediated teaching learning process during this pandemic. And we also thought that the process and experiences of students who were really in the process are uh, extremely important and not just what they were able to achieve at the end of the task. Uh, Self-reflection was also needed on part of us because we had to make some decisions, including the decision to continue with the uh, task instead of, you know, replacing it with an easier task. So our research study was guided by broadly, uh, it was guided by three questions. Uh, first is what are the perceptions of these pre-service teachers about being oriented for the storytelling task through WhatsApp? Then what have been their experiences during the assessment through this recorded video? Then uh, uh, focusing on our experiences, what were the apprehensions and assumptions that guided our decisions uh, for conducting uh, this task and assessment of this task through video recording. So we would uh, we have tried to reflect on our experiences and then we have tried to draw some implications for the real life language methodology, as I suggested earlier, uh, we uh, administered this uh, semi-structured questionnaire through Google form. Uh, this had MCQs and short answer type questions. And uh, we tried to gauge their perceptions and experiences through this uh, small questionnaire. So we have uh, tabulated the data and we have tried to discuss it both quantitatively and qualitatively here. Vanita will now explain further. Vanita? Yes, Pooja. Yeah. Uh, continuing further, I would uh, throw some light on the uh, key findings, you know, when we used WhatsApp, you know, uh, 
to integrate teaching and assessment practices. So as far as the attendance was concerned, since we used WhatsApp you know, as a mode uh, for teaching and assessment uh, uh, practice, I think uh, more than half of the students said that they regularly attended all the sessions. So when we say, so when I say session, uh, these pertain mainly to the orientation sessions, you know, where we introduced what the storytelling practicum was all about. And uh, this was a 12 hour uh, orientation session that was uh, held, you know. Uh, as far as the suitability of the platform uh, was concerned, uh, again, um, say around 70% of the students said that WhatsApp was one of the best mediums, you know, since it was accessible to all, you know, but yet we had some percentage of students, you know, who felt that this was not uh, a very good uh, mode as well, you know, because I think storytelling is more enjoyed, you know, when we have a live audience and uh, here uh, through WhatsApp, you know, the face-to-face -face interaction was not that possible. So our students came up with the varied alternatives, you know, to WhatsApp, they talked about Google meet zoom and any other online meet you know apart from whatsapp uh, they also mentioned skype could also be a best medium you know through uh, which this practicum you know could take place uh, next as far as the advantages of using uh, WhatsApp for storytelling classes was concerned, uh, as you can see, you know, the four major points, you know, that uh, came up, you know, from this uh, discussion was that uh, this, uh, the students had all time access, you know, to the information. So even if the students that did not attend the classes, you know, they were still able to access the information through WhatsApp and, uh, there was a ease of sharing, you know, uh, the resources, you know, as we, as teacher educators were able to share a plethora of, uh, resources, you know, through this mode. And uh, this was also, this also served as a great exposure, you know, uh, to, uh, the storytelling, uh, literature, you know, or through this mode, uh, as well as, uh, you know, some students felt that this can also be non-participative, you know, because this really worked, you know, for the students uh, who were not very, um, who were very introvert, you know, since they did not feel like participating, you know, in the sessions. As far as the disadvantages of uh, using the WhatsApp for storytelling sessions was concerned, the major disadvantage was that uh, uh, this lagged, you know, the one-to-one -one interaction, you know, uh, which generally takes place, you know, in... Uh, you know, when, when we are in the classrooms, you know, when we are actually uh, looking at the students and interacting with them, you know, and uh, due to this, uh, there was a lack of peer support and collaboration, you know, uh, that was uh, taking place, you know, because everyone logged in, you know, through their own uh, phones. So there was less uh, student to student interaction or peer collaboration, you know, that was uh, happening. So this became little uh, less motivational also, you know, for the students uh, to come up, you know, uh, with their questions or queries you know, because usually when you are in the classroom setup, you know, you, you, we can give tasks, you know, in peers or, you know, in pair or in group work, you know, but through WhatsApp, you know, it was a little challenging, you know, to give tasks. So, uh, the major finding was that, um, this basically, uh, led to, uh, an isolation uh, sort of a setup, you know, as far as the learners engagement was concerned, all the students felt that yes, they all felt very engaged, you know, during uh, most of the sessions because they could understand the content, you know, the content was easy, it was understandable, you know, on part of the students, they could participate in all the discussions, you know, that took place because we always used to give, give them some prompts, you know, and then they used to come up, you know, uh, with their answers. And yes, uh, because we uh, shared a lot of resources online. So that was enough to uh, sustain them, you know, throughout the session. And they were also very uh, interested, you know, throughout the session because, uh, because of the prompts that we were able to share, you know. As far as the difficulties, you know, were concerned uh, using this WhatsApp, most of the students faced a lot of difficulties and we have divided these difficulties into four themes. Uh, there was a lack of uh, conducive environment because when we talk of the actual classroom, you know, you always have that uh, set up, you know. So when we have a storytelling uh, practicum, you know, we have storyboards that are put up in the classrooms, you know. So there, so so that print rich environment, you know, really motivates the students, you know to uh, gel up, you know, with the content. But here uh, they said that because of the WhatsApp, you know, they did not have that conducive learning uh, environment, you know, and their home environment was not that uh, effective, you know, uh, for uh, good learning, you know, to take place. Then there was no peer support at home. Uh, as far as the technological issues were concerned, most of the students uh, did face, you know, uh, uh, unstable uh, network due to which uh, uh, 
internet connectivity issues you know came up and uh, there were some problems you know with the uh, hand setup as well you know as far as the nature of uh, interaction uh, was concerned yes we did try to make it uh, more engaging uh, when we shared you know a lot of resources and some discussion prompts you know and there were some online tasks that were given to the students you know but that restricted and limited the communication you know because uh, there was no uh, one to one interaction you know that was uh, taking place and this led to a delayed uh, communication so uh, through whatsapp you know students felt that uh, you know uh, engaging through whatsapp could be little distractive you know for the students and as it led to a lot of uh, confusions you know uh, and more effort uh, was needed uh, in terms of reading and responding you know to the messages you know because at times students were not available you know on the whatsapp so they used to read the messages late and that led to uh, some confusions next so, uh, continuing uh, with our uh, uh, responses on perspectives and experiences of students on the video recording task uh, we collected some apprehensions that students had before they began recording the task and the apprehensions as you can see here uh, were related to whether they would be able to perform in front of the camera or not whether they will be able to uh, perform uh, in front of an imagined audience or without any audience or not then uh, what about their expressions what about the interactions that is supposed to happen then what if glitches come uh, in sending and recording the video so all these apprehensions were there but interestingly if we look at the summary of the entire data we find that almost the entire population felt that it was justified to take the assessment task through uh, this uh, video recording and uh, also uh, a large population felt that the task couldn't have been avoided even in the pandemic situation although uh, almost 49% people felt that they faced some difficulty uh, and yet uh, a huge population responded that uh, you know it really strengthened their understanding of the uh, process and techniques of storytelling and um, you know if you look at the relevance of the task in the time of uh, covid 19 uh, uh, you know uh, the most interesting thing that i noticed was that many students felt the task was very engaging it was a creative uh, activity and it really acted as a stress buster for many of them so they really you know in fact our students created a channel uh, on which they uploaded all their videos and they really took it a little ahead if we look closely at the difficulties they uh, faced in recording the videos for assessment we can uh, divide those uh, responses into these four categories uh, environmental factors where they felt that uh, some felt that it was quite awkward to uh, record in front of the family there were background noises and you know some students come from really uh, uh you know a low resource uh, homes so they have lack of space also then there were personal factors because some people tend to be camera conscious there were technology related issues because even smartphones are not available to many students in our classes then uh, sharing long videos were very difficult and many didn't doesn't know they many don't know how to share through google drive and all and then there were performance related factors because it required a lot of practice because they thought that that it has to be perfect in front of the camera then uh, some didn't have access to very good story uh, however interestingly the same four factors become enabler for uh, half of the population so the environment becomes for some people it becomes conducive at home because now they are in the nit free environment in uh, you know among their family members who could uh, only support them uh, then uh, you know technology kind of uh, supported them because they could reshoot many times and they could enhance the quality of the video by using uh, editing softwares then performance related also because they could explore many options and they could express themselves really really well then personally many felt that they felt really challenged and it really required them to present to their best and the task was really growth oriented and uh, you know at least two three people have reported that for introvert student the task was very well thought out because uh, they could perform to uh, their satisfaction if we look at the overall relevance of the task in strengthening understanding about storytelling 
uh, we find these uh, five uh, different themes exposure to forms and techniques uh, the process of storytelling definitely got enhanced in terms of selection of story preparation uh, you know how they have to prepare how they have to modulate voice selection of props and other things then uh, the forms of storytelling that they want to explore from the vast variety that we uh, shared from indian traditions uh, interest uh, you know the most uh, important factor i found was uh, that they could be self reflexive looking at the videos that they have shot they can uh, go back to it they can see what are their strengths and what have been their weaknesses and they can work upon it further then personally it has been a uh, beneficial for many of them because they could now understand that they can also become storytellers professionally definitely it helped them because when we collected this data students had already started volunteering for some ngos and they could really identify that how stories uh, could be uh, very well utilized uh, in uh, uh, these uh, settings for uh, elaborating complex concepts or for uh, uh you know enhancing the creativity and imagination of the students and they effectively used to storytelling as a technique to connect with uh, children vanita yeah so as far as uh the clarity about the criteria of assessment was concerned i think uh more, i mean 75% of the population was clear about the criteria of assessment which included uh, how they would be presenting the story etc as far as the areas for scope of improvement in the final presentation was concerned i think pooja did talk about it earlier you know because uh, through the questionnaire we gave them a chance to reflect upon you know some pertinent uh, areas like uh, suitable conducive environment you know uh, probably you know would have worked better where there would be less of distraction and background noise also in terms of their performance you know they could have uh, selected the story in a better way puja last slide better way and voice modulation could have done you know uh, could have been better as well as more practice you know uh, could have been needed uh, lastly as far as the quality of uh, feedback uh, is concerned you know i think uh, all of them reported receiving a very uh, positive and constructive feedback you know because uh, the feedback was constructive in the sense that we did talked about uh, the areas you know where our students were positive you know and what were the areas of development and that helped them in improving you know their performance and the feedback was uh, clear and relevant it was it helped in strengthening you know the understanding you know of what more was required you know on part of them and it was insightful you know since we did talk about the positives and uh, what else you know was needed on their part yeah so overall it was a great and a novel experience you know on part of the students uh, you know we did try to create a joyful learning environment you know through using uh, whatsapp you know because uh, uh, students were also of the view that they themselves were able to explore you know uh, some notions you know about their uh, personality so students you know who were very shy and who were very camera conscious you know they did uh, try to work on their uh, weaknesses you know and they um, came out blooming you know uh, through this uh, mode and yes working with technology was new you know uh, as far as the students and uh, us was concerned you know but we did try uh, a lot you know and and you know tried our best uh, so uh, this was also a way you know through which we could actually uh, you know introduce uh, the world of storytelling you know through our uh, students so as far as the teacher educators experience is concerned uh, pooja you could just uh, highlight uh, some points yeah yeah, yeah. So overall if we look seconds. at our experiences overall if we yeah. look at uh, our experiences uh, uh, i think it was a very collaborative it was a very uh, it was a collaborative task a truly a collaborative task although we had our apprehensions and fears and we felt that interruptions were uh, happening when we were uh, uh you know uh, doing discussions on whatsapp because people would join in at different points and they would miss out the uh, prior uh, information and uh, uh, uh you know but uh, uh, still it was so we could see that the, the participation was uneven and yet it was a fruitful experience in the sense that we could share a number of resources uh and it was a creative and engaging experience the you know the best thing happened was that uh, we could make learners uh, we could uh, 
uh, you know you see this idea of learners autonomy in the class being used because in in the video uh, creating task for example learners took a lot more responsibility than they would have taken in the um, you know in class experience uh, so um, next yeah yeah so as far as the implications for real life language use is concerned like we have again divided this you know into three areas what is the potential you know of using this virtual platform so i think it can work you know in a very low resource classrooms you know especially for small group teaching but we definitely uh, suggest a blended learning environment you know for the storytelling practicum that is offline as well as the online you know uh offline means face to face mode and the online mode you know as far as the student learning in concern it's very important to do a needs analysis you know what are students need you know and what are the best uh ways you know through which we can engage uh, our learners you know because definitely you know it is a big challenge you know to engage students you know online and uh, even if we are doing online you know how can we bring in peer support and collaborative task you know so that they uh remain engaged uh, throughout and it's also very important uh, to come up with such task and activities you know wherein uh, we can make the learners autonomous as far as uh, the implications related to instruction and assessments uh, assessment is concerned you know it's very important to plan you know first of all and uh, keeping time in mind you know it's very important to uh, you know plan classes which are of short duration you know and we need to design our activities carefully keeping in mind the needs and interest you know of our students also the resources you know we need to keep in the uh, diverse uh, variety of resources they could be audio video or written resources you know then how are we uh you know keeping the interaction you know through whatever platform we are using are we using questions are we using discussions are we using a, a clear uh, um, rubric you know of assessment you know for our students are we uh, doing enough demonstrations you know uh, for our students you know to keep them engaged you know through this particular practicum and i think uh, if it is not an in person assessment then we definitely need to keep in mind that video recording can always work you know for students you know uh, especially who have a lot of inhibitions and uh, last but not the least you know uh, so when there is a classroom setup you know we always think of how assessment is integrated into the teaching learning process so when it comes to online assessment you know we also need to keep in mind that feedback you know and that too quick and uh, in time feedback is also very important to keep our students motivated you know throughout the sessions yeah. uh puja next i think we don't have uh, enough time you know because we had actually compiled you know uh, some videos you know of our students uh, so <laughs> i think jonathan we don't have time maybe uh, when you know the question answer session is going on we can just uh, yes 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 show the videos <laughs> uh, thank you very much pooja and venita for your detailed presentation you you went through that very quickly lots of information in there uh same as before if anyone would like to ask the presenters a question please feel free to type your question into the the chat box uh i have a couple of questions if you don't mind i'd like to ask uh, you, sure. you, you 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 briefly mentioned uh the assessment criteria for for the storytelling task And my question is did you share this criteria with your students and if so how did you make sure that your students understood the criteria yes uh, so uh, yes uh, criteria has to be shared because uh, otherwise uh, you know they get uh, lost so uh, definitely we adapted the criteria a little bit because uh, uh, you know so, uh, see in in class assessment we there wouldn't be any uh, you know we would say that they have to perform live in front of the whole class for assessment but here because they were making the video and uh, we felt that learners came from very diverse background so we didn't really give them a time and a date that you have to submit your video by this time and by this date so according to the needs and context of the learner we gave them a range so let us say from 9th april to 12th of april you can all submit so uh, so that was you know one flexibility the other was also uh, you know in a uh real class assessment we would expect our students to also elaborate on how they would use this story for pedagogical purposes and they have to involve the class for a follow up task uh, you know they have to ask some questions and maybe 
how they are going to use the story. However, we thought that that may be a little bit more artificial um, in the uh, video setup, and also uh, students may not really, you know, uh, find a story or uh, absolutely fit to teach a pedagogical concept. So we just let them choose the story of their choice, uh, which they feel that they could adapt and you know they could uh, uh, use any form in order to tell that story. Yeah, also, Jonathan, just to add a bit, you know, so when we share the criteria, it goes to all the students, you know, so when a student, you know, he, uh, he or she posts his uh, video, you know, on the WhatsApp, so that criteria is with all the students, you know, so they, we, we all uh, try to give, you know, a group feedback, you know, uh, to the concerned student, you know, keeping in mind the criteria. I have one more question before we finish actually here. Uh, do you think you all are the teachers who've used this? Do you think they'll keep using this once the uh, once COVID has gone and everyone's back into the classroom? Do you think we'll, we'll keep using this kind of technology as for assessment purposes? Yes, because I because we are all teacher educators and somewhere uh, uh, somewhere we also felt that a uh, technology we have been using many videos in our classroom uh, earlier also but uh, i think that uh, uh, we did find some alternatives for example uh, one point came uh, very interestingly that introvert students found it uh, kind of uh, you know enabling for them so i do think that uh, uh, you know because it is made up of this practicum is made up of a series of uh, uh, formative tasks. So I think we can use that. I can think of using a video recording alternatively also in my real classroom setup. And that is our implications that more blended learning environment can be created now. Not WhatsApp, but definitely more, uh, you know, definitely a blended learning environment can be created. Uh, we have one question that's just come in and then we'll finish for today. Uh, and the question reads, how well does storytelling fit into your national curriculum? Okay, uh, uh, so uh, storytelling, uh, see in our curriculum, uh, we have, a, uh, we recently had a paper on, uh, there is a national paper on early childhood care uh, liter early literacy and uh, language development and in that uh, uh, position paper storytelling and children's literature has been given due importance uh, you know specifically during this time of uh, uh, three to six seven years of age where you know children are building their foundational skills of literacy and yeah. uh, uh, our uh, uh, curriculum also does talk about uh, breaking the uh, you know, monotony of the classrooms and uh, uh, bringing in a variety of stories and children's literature to classroom. So, yeah, and our uh, policies also, you know, they uh, stress on using uh, stories, you know, as or storytelling, you know, as a pedagogical tool to teach not just uh, any language, you know, but how we can use storytelling, you know, across the curriculum. So how we can use stories to teach maths or science or social sciences. So yes, it is very well integrated, you know, into our uh, national curriculum as well. You know, I think interestingly, uh, we, in one of the plenary session, Dr. Rukmani Banerjee is also from Pratham is also going to be speaking here in this conference. And uh, she's from Pratham, which is an NGO dedicated to the spread of literacy, uh, specifically in low resource uh, classrooms and setups. And probably she would, and they have, Pratham has also, Pratham is an NGO and they have started this endeavor called storyweaver.org. And Storyweaver yeah. is all about uh, looking at stories for pedagogical purposes. Thank you. Uh, thank yeah. you once thank again for, for a very wonderful thank presentation. I, I certainly learned something from it. <laughs> uh, coming up next in this thank room you. will be Lynn May on exploring semi-direct speaking tasks. Can we tap into interactional and pragmatic competence? Uh, we'll be back in about 10 minutes. Uh, hopefully I'll see you there then. <laughs>